Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and we will begin our session on the Moscow River. Please take your seats now. Please take your seats. Okay, we're going to begin the session now, so if you're having a conversation, please stop. Especially people behind me I can hear speaking. Please be quiet now. No telephone calls, please. No telephone calls during the session. If you want to make a telephone call, leave the room. Okay? So, um, firstly, welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Clark. I'm the moderator for this session. In a moment, I will introduce for you our very distinguished panel. Let me just say first that the focus here is on the Moscow River. It is not possible for a city that has a great river to succeed without embracing that river. If the city ignores the river, the river becomes a liability rather than an asset. And the river usually has a strong investment of the DNA of the city in it. My own city, London, began its waterfront redevelopment in 1951 with the Festival of Britain. And we still continue today. More than 60 years later, we are still redeveloping the River Thames, and it will take 100 years to complete the redevelopment of the River Thames. In the room today, we have many people who play a special role in the Moscow River project. So firstly, please raise your hand if you're working in Moscow city government. Raise your hand. Let's see. Don't be shy. More or less than yes, thank you yes. very much. Please raise your hand if you are one of the people involved in bidding in the recent competition in the Moscow River project. Yes, Edouard. Who else? Yes, good. Please raise your hand if you are one of the jury members of the Moscow River project. Jury members? Where are you? Oh, one is here can see a few others. Uh, raise your hand if you're a member of the International Advisory Board on uh, Moscow River. Okay, yes. Uh, raise your hand if you live anywhere near to the river, if you live near to Moscow River. Okay, very good. Raise your hand if you own land or a business near to the river. <laughs> You're very lucky, I think, those who own land and business near to the river. Okay, raise your hand if you want the Moscow River project to succeed. Very good. Raise your hand if you don't want the Moscow River project to succeed. Ah, okay. Goodbye. <laughs> we don't, we, you're welcome to listen, but not to speak. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I want to introduce now our distinguished guest, then I'll explain the agenda. Firstly, on my left, Sergei Kuznetsov, the chief architect of the city of Moscow. Sitting next to him, Professor Miguel Bukalem, director of the Center for Cities at the University of Sao Paulo, former secretary of urban development for the city of Sao Paulo. Sitting next to him, a very happy man, Mr. Edouard Moreau. He is one of the team that has won the international competition on the Moscow River project. So let's give him a round of applause, if we may. <laughs> Sitting next to him, Paul Le Croix, senior urban specialist, specialist from Paris, Ile de France, where the redevelopment of the Seine has been such an important project. Sitting next to him, please welcome our very special guest, the Deputy Mayor of Budapest, Mr. Bolas Szczesnier, who is in charge of the Danube redevelopment project in Budapest. Welcome, Deputy Mayor. And next to him, Dr. Karima Nigmatulina, Executive Director of Genplan 
Japan, Moscow, welcome Karina. Now, we also have sitting in the room some people who have been involved in the jury, and I will be particularly trying to talk a little bit later on with Mr. Roman Trotsenko. So where is he? Where's Mr. Trotsenko? Can anybody see him? Well, hopefully he'll arrive, otherwise someone else will answer his questions a little bit later on. The format is this. We ask five people to speak for five minutes each to set the scene. We'll begin in a moment with Mr. Kuznetsov. Then we'll have a panel discussion with them. Then I will invite other people in the room to contribute to the conversation. We'll have a little discussion with Mr. Trotsenko. What does the international jury think about the potential? And then I will ask Karima, if she will, to summarize and conclude the session. That's the introduction. May I please, Sergei Kuznetsov, Chief Architect of Moscow, invite you to make the introductory speech. Thank you. Do I speak Russian? It's okay? Yes. Okay, I think as, uh, we can spare some time if I will speak Russian. Okay. Я я по-русски расскажу тогда, да, для знаю, что у меня регламент всего 5 so I will speak Russian. I only have 5 minutes, so I'll try to be brief but uh, very informative. Uh, Greg has set a very uh, intensive uh, time frame time format of the session, so we'll try to stick to it. Uh, Ma the Moskva River. What does it uh, appear to be and what's its structure at uh, the beginning of our project. Uh, shall, shall I uh, turn the pages? Here are the main uh, numbers, the main parameters of the project, uh, not the Moscow, Moscow River itself, but the project which has been launched uh, recently by the Moscow, govern, Moscow city government. Uh, it's quite an ambitious uh, year, 2035. Uh, in London, it took uh, a lot more time than this, and uh, it will take us definitely more, lo a lot of time to do certain things, but that's our current planning, and we hope to be on time uh, with this time frame. I will not read out all the numbers. Everyone is able to read in this audience, so it's a big project, and just for you to understand, the territories which are, which are connected with the river are Com composed 10% of Moscow city territory in its older within its older city limits. It's a large project which uh, is ho home to lots of reality, and potentially it can uh, also house lot, lots uh, 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 lots lots uh, a lot of other uh, dwellings and uh, structures. Uh, there is a river which consists of different rivers. There is a Green River, which is a natural river. It's northwest of Moscow. That's where the Moskva River enters the city. It's about 500 kilometers long, out of which 83 kilometers flow within Moscow. So we deal with only one sixth of uh, the, the Moskva River flow. But uh, it's uh, the most significant part of the river. So. Uh, there is another part of the river inside the center of Moscow, which was in the, in the master plan of Moscow of 1935, which was implemented at that time almost totally. Then the industrial part in uh, further to the southeast, the southern port, uh, the Zil factory. And then we have a, the dwelling part the outskirts where people sl sleep and uh, commute from the, those regions. It was built in the 70s, and it's now a bit dull, uh, the way uh, it looks. And uh, the way this territory was animated is one of the uh, goals of this project, the current land use. I will not dwell on this slide for too long on this colorful scheme. But let's look at this uh, circular diagram. Uh, one fourth of all territories adjacent to the river is uh, industrial, occupied by industrial areas. We have uh, 10 times as little people uh, in the, in those, working in those areas as we had um, compared to what we had 30 years ago. So. Mostly, these are abandoned territories which only pollute the city, the urban uh, landscape, and they're 
comprise some wasteland. They sometimes correspond to the green areas. However, we know that uh, the quality of those green areas is uh, a matter of big questions. Uh, formally, it's, it pertains to the green area, but in fact, it doesn't. Uh, it's not the case anymore. Uh, and uh, we're, we want to convert this into green areas. And we want to maintain them in, uh, pro in the proper state uh, and develop them uh, uh, proper and uh, the areas around them. As for the embankments, the um, line, the water, the waterfront, uh, not the green line, but what uh, actually what uh, happens on the shore of the river. About 200 kilometers are inside uh, uh, the city, um, and 60, only 60 kilometers of embankments are, lie within the city. It's not a big percent, not as big as we would like to see. And the diagram shows how many embankments are within the city, and even where the river formally um, are uh, can be in, can can be described as accessible no plants are there you can access the river for example in uh, the stroganov flood plain um, there are green territories i'm very familiar with those parts with those districts this is a, this is a good recreational space uh, this is meant meant to be but uh, that that needs to be yet yet, yet to be developed uh, in fact, a, a river is also a means of communications between different city, parts of the city, different boroughs. And now it, it's more of a barrier than a, than a means of connection. Uh, the density of bridges is too low, especially at, in certain places. And uh, there are 30 kilometers sometimes without a single bridge, which is an obstacle for transport for transportation, which is a factor in traffic congestion. That's uh, uh, it has to be said about the waterfront for, uh, uh, along the river and uh, along the embankments. We now have zero, tra almost zero traffic of passen passenger traffic and declining cargo traffic, which is, which is bad, intrinsically bad. Uh, because uh, it is more efficient uh, to transport cargo along the river than uh, uh, along the streets. Before we start this project, we have studied the international experience. I'll give you some examples. It's common, it's an open secret that the renovation of waterfront is uh, a, an international trend, and uh, uh, the list given here is not uh, exhaustive. And unfortunately, we we are uh, we have the exper international experience we, which we can learn from uh, in uh, terms of d other um, big cities is Hamburg, uh, Alliance, uh, Nantes, Bilbao. The effect of Bilbao, which came with the renovation of the river, it became a symbol of renovation and creating the cultural objects such as uh, the Frank Mary M Museum. And uh, it, be it became a spot in the cultural map of Europe. We all know that uh, the countries uh, around the Northern Sea, North Sea, um, they uh, form a collaboration, um, a good collaboration in the terms of developing waterfronts. I have a book. Uh, called waterfront development, development, and this is uh, something that can be studied by us as a good uh, means of help. Here, I would like to thank you for your attention. Without talking about the project which was yesterday adopted by the mayor, uh, the outcomes of the uh, competition of um, the tender, and uh, we want to start our work right now. Thank you. 
So, Sergei, if I may, um, you have explained that it is a long-term project for the city of Moscow, but it has many short-term benefits. You've talked about the land use, the industry, the jobs, the green, the livability, the role of the river as a piece of transportation, a bridge between different parts of Moscow, and you've also explained that you see it evolving and developing in certain zones or phases. So this is very, very helpful. Shall we listen now to the uh, the, the successful scheme that was chosen yesterday by the mayor, and I invite Edouard Moreau to share a little bit of the successful project that has yesterday been agreed by uh, Sergei and his colleagues, and of course the mayor. <clears throat> thank, thank you, Greg. Um, first, I would like to say that I'm uh, representing here a fairly big team, and first and foremost, uh, Project Meganum, a Russian uh, team. So uh, it's a Frenchman here representing uh, a big Russian team. Um, Sorry, it's big, uh, <laughs> lucky. Yes, it's first, first large international competition, which, we, which was won by Russian team. Yes. And <laughs> yes, and here we have only, I think, not Russian yes. representative from this team. Yes, thank you. So yes, exactly. Um, this it was a big consortium, just not just uh, Project Meganum, but, uh, but also uh, Gillespie's and GTP from London, Systematica from Milan, uh, Cushman and Wake Wakefield, and Strategy Partners from Russia. So it was a very big team to understand the complexity of this, of this project. Second point before entering the project itself, I would like to uh, thank the organizers uh, for this competition. I think it was a very high quality uh, competition and uh, a lot of work were, was done before we actually started ourselves this competition. All the background analysis was there. Uh, so I would say that this really helped us uh, a lot uh, to speed up the process and you know, jump straight in in the project. Um, so it's difficult for me to uh, kind of summarize this. Uh, I think my presentation is that maybe I need, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so our, our, it's, it's, it was, it's over 80 kilometers of, uh, of riverfront we're talking about. So the complexity of such project is, uh, is, is enormous. Um, of course, as uh, Sergei was saying, it's uh, well known. Um, this this competition or this kind of study is uh, inscribed in a well known uh, uh, riverfront regeneration uh, uh, context of major of the cities around the world, and this we were aware of that, of course. But we uh, wanted first and foremost to recognize the uniqueness of Moscow situation, and I think this lied in our kind of uh, overall. Um, approach of the city. Um, the, in, in Moscow you have a very extensive uh, river network, not just um, the competition site, but uh, across New Moscow. Um, and our kind of backbone strategy was to um, introduce, to, to, to turn blue to green and introduce the idea of a river link park, which could be the new blue and green structure of the development of Moscow. So this was kind of our backbone uh, of, of the development, and here you see how uh, the city uh, can actually uh, connect back again uh, uh, to the river in certain points, which we call future ports. And this I will uh, talk about it a bit later on our project. And the idea really uh, as a starting point, or almost a provocative uh, starting point, was to say, I think Moscow deserves quality public, quality public space on the water, and this is uh, Piazza San Marco in, in Venice, and I think there's no reason why uh, we can, cannot offer this kind of high quality public space on the water. Um, for us, uh, port is a very important notion. It's uh, almost, uh, I would say, a fourth generation of, uh, of public space. We haven't invented anything here, uh, but for us it was in important to uh, show it in the perspective that you, uh, these ports, uh, these special points along the rivers are not competing with other public space. They offer something else. Uh, and there's a value and a quality uh, of this space on the water. And this, I think this was really the backbone of our proposal. Very quickly, because I have only five minutes to present uh, uh, a two-month research of over 40 people, so uh, I'll be very, very quick. We looked at different uh, networks uh, um, in the city, looked at where places of accessibility, of places where it was not accessible, and, and our system of ports were trying to reconnect the city with the, with the river. So very quickly, we identified uh, uh, 11 strategic city-scale ports, 
uh, and 26 district scale ports. This was very important. It's kind of well distributed, uh, uh, and, and it was the result of, uh, of this two months research where we really located very precisely these strategic points. This is, I think, is one of the uh, biggest value of our, our proposal. So very, I'll just skim through those uh, slides. I have only a very short time. Uh, we looked also at embankment, how to better uh, connect the city. Um, and of course, the situation, the conditions around, along the river uh, changes. Uh, ways of activating for us was very important. How do you activi activate the river? And of course, the uh, ecology aspect. So that was the three kind of um, strategy, connect, activate, and clean. I, will, I won't detail that. And really looking at uh, our strategy, we really recognize the importance of uh, have, having a, little, a different strategy for the periphery and the center. And this for Meganum was very um, important. Uh, Meganum last year at the Moscow Urban Forum did a, uh, a study on archaeology of the periphery. So this work on the river was almost uh, the second step for us in terms of building up the knowledge of the, the periphery, which is less, I would say, less well studied than the center. So of course, in the center, we have a different strategy. We want to green the the, the center and intensify the periphery and the intensification of the periphery um, through those future ports. So very quickly the, uh, in the center the idea was to recognize the the status of uh, the current status of the of the river, the the, the beautiful minerality of the of, of the uh, the riverfront, and add in so in some asp in some strategic location some greenery. And this greenery are not just for visual uh, aspects; it's also a, act as a public space and connecting element. Uh, with you can see here different conditions along the river, along the center, uh, and. Understanding that this kind of green arrow from from uh, from the, uh, the the southwest of uh, um, the center to the to the northeast um, could be one connecting element, one connecting public space. Very quickly, this uh, this is the current situation. The idea is to add this uh, um, uh, greenery in the center, which could act as as a public space uh, where people can really almost touch the water. I think it's a very important aspect of touching the water. And you know, we can have also uh, this this image of a fisherman next to the Kremlin. For us, it was an important vision that the the river is for everyone. Um, in the periphery, we've uh, we've looked at the entire periphery along the M uh, inside the MCAD, uh, but we've focused our intention, uh, our design intention, in, into five sites. So I'll be also very quick uh, for these uh, these sites: um, uh, Stroginska Bay. Um, the idea of this uh, is to recognize. First, I would say just to summarize is that we recognize that every single territory has its own quality, and the ports is not a standardized item. It's, it's a gateway for an existing district. Um, and this really much, we like the idea of ports, or the analogy of ports, because it has a certain poetry. Uh, the idea of the starting point, the idea of the gateway, the windows to the world. And each district deserves its own windows to the world. So very quickly, this uh, it was to recognize this Stroginska Bay, the, uh, the, the beautiful nature, the existing nature, and to really uh, have specific intervention, very localized, and to protect 99% and intensify 1%. Parliament Gardens, this is also a very strategic new uh, location. I'll be very quick. I know uh, I'm very aware of the time. Uh, here you can see a, a civic, uh, civic square, a very large space, but this is at the level of the city, uh, an even square, and this is kind of one image of a port. But again, every port are different. This is a port in Moscow City, which is really much trying to solve the problem of parking and how you can integrate parking and public space into one uh, piece of, of landscape. So you see the ports look very different from each other. Zill as well. Zill Project Meganum is uh, is uh, partially uh, uh, involved in in Zill in in this location, and but we looked at uh, beyond the borders uh, at this whole peninsula. How you can work as one entity uh, as a model of leave, work, and play. You have three different uh, uh, boulevard here, and each has this kind of quality of mixing leave, work, and play. Again, other types of of, of ports, very different. 
And we like to finish uh, this uh, presentation of this idea of ports on looking at one of the most uh, invisible places in the periphery in Moscow, uh, Kapotnia. Um, which, is, which is a very invisible, I would say, uh, district, not well connected at the periphery and just before the MCAD. And these, these districts also deserve their own uh, ports. They all deserve their own quality space on the water. Uh, perhaps smaller, perhaps more modest, but still it's important to offer this quality uh, public space. And why not uh, going back to the Venice vision? Exactly. Um, again, I would like to thank uh, the big team that participated in this project. And I would also say that, uh, of course, we consider this as not a final solution, but one contribution. Uh, we're actually looking very much forward to looking at other uh, participants. And, and I think the combination of uh, this contribution can form a very solid framework. And we're really looking forward to participating in the next steps. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, Edouard, thank you so much. Obviously, it's impossible to summarize a brilliant scheme like this in just a few minutes. But you emphasized again and again the uniqueness of Moscow, the uniqueness of each pole, yes. the uniqueness of potential, and the uniqueness of approach that you will adopt. And I think this is going to prove to be uh, a great strength of the proposition. We'll, of course, try to get to some discussion as soon as we can. So we've done two from five, and we didn't take five minutes each. So I'm asking everyone else uh -huh. to be very disciplined, if you will. Um, two of the people at the table are members of the International Advisory Board that have come here at the invitation of Karima and indeed Sergei to offer some international perspective on this. And I'm going to turn first to Paul Le Croat from Paris, and then Paul, I think, will hand to uh, Miguel Bucalem from Sao Paulo for an international perspective. Thank you, Greg. Um, I'll be talking on behalf of the board. That means um, cities of Hong Kong, London, Mumbai, Paris, Shenzhen, Sao Paulo, and Tokyo. So we have drawn from our own experience uh, to try and advise the city of Moscow. We didn't see uh, the project, the winner, and we didn't see the others. So we just worked with what we know about the, the, this river. We worked in a very short time, and so what I'm going to tell you is really just a few, a few ideas. I'll try and go quickly. We were asked to work on the how part and not on the what to do on the river. Am I too close? Can we do or something someone? with the sound? Yeah. It's not good. Right. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes, that could be it. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Yes, uh, so I'll be talking about uh, the, the, some th things we can do quickly on the river, it's things that uh, are, are short term and more related to the human scale of the river. And Miguel uh, will talk about uh, the long term and the development part and the, uh, how can we get things going on that part. Um, I would like to make one remark, five recommendations, and uh, maybe two final comments. Uh, the first re uh, remark is about the, really the importance of the river in the, not only the future development of the city, but also uh, this, it, the continuity of its own history. And that is something really important. We are talking about very long term. Um, it's, for me, the city and for us in the board is really a civic avenue for the city. So we must really think differently. It's not the, uh, um, the back side of the city, it's the front side. So really we must uh, think it a bit differently. I think it can accommodate a lot of growth. It can really be a place of recreation, a place for the citizens, also a place for work, for, to live also and to study. So this is really important. I think these elements are in the project. Uh, I think um, there's also something really important is that we need to phase this project. And uh, I'll be talking about really very, very short term things that you can do now. But really, we must think within this uh, 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 vision, within this strategy, as, as something really phased in time and adaptable and flexible because the situation is going to change. Um, my five recommendations and our five recommendations are about the first one is about quick wins. You can really make quick wins by offering the river to the people right now. 
it can be by opening strategic stretches of the city, opening a new uh, path on, the, on the, the banks of the of the river, or closing a road like we've done in Paris, um, uh, on first on Sundays for, or on holidays, and then maybe uh, for less temporary uses. What we can we found out in Paris, but that we can draw from other experiences in the world, is that this changed the way people use the river. It uh, creates desire for the river, and it also creates desire for development. So that's really imp important. I think you can also uh, create temporary parks that way in in uh, these industrial areas areas you've talked about, and I think that could also change the way you think about these areas. The second recommendation is about uh, easy to, to build improvements of public space. Today you can hardly cross the road to get to the river, so just pedestrian uh, um, crossings are strategic. They, they're really simple to do, but I think we must not be afraid of car traffic. Car traffic is um, something you can work upon. If you see these images, there were 40,000 cars on the banks of the River Seine, and in the middle there was a, a massive car park. Now, not only do we have a public space, but we have far less cars in, on the banks of the river, but also in the whole city. So it, people change their way of traveling when the environment changed. This is very important. Uh, we can also do very simple things like sidewalk uh, widening, putting vegetation, uh, working on the low embankment. Uh, I know it's an issue with the federal government. Maybe the federal government could one day give the embankment to the city of Moscow, uh, because the, um, the management of this uh, embankment needs to be city-oriented, I think. We can work on uh, also on footbridge. We can work on the roads and the streets leading to the river. There's all sorts of small work that can be done right away. The third recommendation is about the living river. You've mentioned it, uh, Edouard. Uh, you must really think this river as a blue and green system that plays a, a role not only in the city, but also in the region. So it's a, it's a real ecosystem, and it's really a, a, a place where you can get a good quality of life, not only for humans, but also for animals and vegetation. And so small Im improvements, working on the hard embankment and making it softer, and all recreating, recreating marshlands could play a role uh, in the decontamination of the river, because that's a strong issue, I think. It could also reduce flooding, and I think that's an issue for uh, the future, too. Um, the fourth recommendation, I'm sorry, I'm going quite quickly, is about tactical, what I call tactical discussions. I mean, you really need to engage discussions, not only about long-term plans, but also about short-term actions that can change uh, these areas. And I think you must engage these conversations with the major private and public owners of uh, the, the land on the riverside. And maybe these uh, conversation can show where small things could really uh, improve the, uh, the riverfront for everybody. So, and in these conversations, of course, you, call, you don't talk about tactics only, you talk about strategy. So it's the way really of involving these private owners. And maybe this uh, involvement might lead to changing the, the original plans and, for instance, preserving strategic industrial areas, we might need to uh, um, uh, encourage uh, high productivity industry in the city of Moscow. I don't think all these sites are there to disappear. Port sites are very important. You've said it, Sergei. In, in the Paris region, we are, uh, are keeping about 80 ports, very small or, or larger port areas because we need them to alleviate uh, um, truck traffic on the roads, and that's really important too. But you must also work on the heritage. Industrial heritage is something really important. In the Paris region, we've destroyed too, too much uh, uh, industrial heritage, and I think now we can reuse the buildings in different ways, which are uh, quite exciting. So there's a lot of work to do uh, on this. The first recommendation would be more general to really raise the awareness of the river 
uh, in the population, but also in the business community. And this is uh, uh, something, I think, quite important. Maybe this uh, uh, project and uh, the uh, excellent terms of reference could be a part of an exhibition on the river, not only in the city centre, but also in the periphery, to show people how important this river is and what we plan to do it. Uh, and really, I think it is important to have the inputs of the po of population and of the businesses and the NGOs in this project, and maybe that uh, can be work done in the next few months. Uh, to uh, finalize, I would like to make two comments. Uh, the first one is that river project, and we've seen it with the, uh, uh, the, the winning team, is not about real estate alone, of course. It's about creating a physical structure for the next 100 years. And this physical structure is meant to uh, sustain the development of Moscow. It implies a very strong involvement of the public authorities over economic and political cycles. So that's really something we have to have in mind. The second is uh, about the quality of life that the uh, Moscow River project is about. I think uh, what strikes us when we come to Moscow for the first time is the congestion and the uh, importance of car in the city. And I think this is really a drawback, not only for the quality of life of Moscow, but probably also for its economy. And I think we need to address these challenges with new solutions, not car parks and roads alone, but transport demand management. And I think this is important also for the future of Moscow. Thank you very much. Great. Paul, thank you very much indeed. So that was part one of the feedback from the International Advisory Board, and you emphasize many things. I won't repeat all of them, but in your last part, you said the public sector must play a strong role in shaping all of this, and achieving quality of life outcomes is key. Professor Miguel Bukalem, can you pick up the story from there? Okay, thank you. I would like to thank the organizer of the Moscow Forum for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here and an honor to have participated in the International Advisory Board. Uh, I, well, we organized the, the comments here in more five points. One, a major catalyst. Complementary what what Paul said, I would like to emphasize that we strongly believe that the Moscow River project can become the catalyst for major structural changes in the spatial dynamics of the city because it should dramatically increase the number of residents in central areas. It should help to create vibrant, decentralized new business districts with mixed use that together can re-engineer the way working trips occur in the city. It should multiply and diversify the range of daytime journeys so as to reduce congestion, to open up the city, and to op optimize its assets and opportunities. Uh, as already Paul said, we didn't know the contents of the concept proposal, so we have concentrated our attention on fundamental conditions that would enable the implementation of the project based on, on the experience of the board with similar projects involving complex and long-term conditions in other major world cities that Paul already mentioned. Uh, point two, avoid mistakes of other cities. In other words, cities, many waterfront redevelopment projects have succeeded. But it's also true that several have not. What are the mistakes to avoid? Do not try to develop the whole at once. It needs careful phasing and sequencing. Do not think that it can be done without major investments. Waterfront can create substantial value and really drive the future of the city. But it's essential to have means to leverage that value and invest in great connectivity and public space. Avoid to rush to get private investors to build cheaply on the sites. The waterfront will become an important part of the city identity and it needs to demonstrate quality if the city is to get substantial spillover benefits. It takes a long time to bring major projects to fruition, so it's essential to maintain momentum over the long term with citizens and with uh, business and government partners. River redevelopment can provide some immediate benefits, as Paul has said, but it can also take 50 years to do the job fully. 
You start with sites that are well connected and try to avoid development sites that are remote unless infrastructure is, can be delivered quickly. Make sure that you adopt mixed use of the waterfronts. It provides better value for people and investors and is also more adaptable over time. Do plenty of small projects as well as big projects, but have sh make sure that the big projects really succeed. It's also important to remember that as waterfronts succeeded, other places uh, can experience some impact. So take care of the displacement in other locations caused by the new capacity in the waterfront. Point three, seek cycles and phases. The board suggests that Moscow River redevelopment would be best approached in several phases. Many ingredients of phase one Poe has already described. In phase one, priority sites should be identified where there is good existing transport capacity or, or, and or public land. Also, the feasibility studies of more complex projects should be undertaken. After phase one, the main phase of the project will be outlined, and there should be room for adapting the projects as it progresses, but always according to the vision to be achieved. Point four, financing and organizing. Two key factors are that the project will be largely developed on private owned land and that will be required substantial financial resources. Therefore, how to induce the planned redevelopments and how to generate financial resources and capture value are critical ingredients. The board suggests that evaluation of the following tools will be required. The board should ask that the city consider the creation of dedicated Moscow River Development Agency as a vehicle to acquire and manage land redevelopment, assembly partners, and joint ventures, deliver the range of projects required in an integrated way. Focus, hierarchy, optimization, agility are some of the benefits that would be gained with the creation of such authority. Tax instruments such as a Moscow River redevelopment levy, a betterment charge for the river intervention area could be considered to provide necessary resources over time required for the project. The selling of additional construction rights for the designated redevelopment areas is an interesting option. These construction rights can be used by the developers to implement the urban plans in those plots designated for private development. The funds obtained by, pub, by the public sector uh, can be used for infrastructure, new public spaces, and affordable housing. These construction rights could be auctioned to give transparency and maximize the value captured. Given that the majority of river land Riverfront land is private owned. The city of Moscow may need to create new legal instruments to induce the implementation of the redevelopment projects. Since these projects may involve many land parcels belonging to different owners, these projects create value. Sharing this value between the city, the developers, and the landowners might be a wise way to make stakeholders move to implement the project. Nevertheless, if inducing, these inducing mechanisms do not work, as a, last, as a last step in the process, it would be critical that the city have land expropriation powers and capacity to be able to make possible to implement the projects. The creation of district management boards to manage and improve public realm signage, streetscaping, safety, and to finance amenities and promotional activities will be very important. These like the BIDs in the USA or the CIDs in South Africa. They are partnership vehicles to get all parts involved in the management of the newly refurbished districts. Point and five and last. The waterfront is part of the whole city and region. Finally, it's important to remember that in the long term, the aim is to reintegrate the river areas with the wider city and region. It's essential to plan for that in advance and to be clear about how it will work. Cities that redevelop their rivers must also reintegrate them, otherwise a new separation occurs, occurs and that can also be unhealthy and create other imbalances. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Miguel, thank you very much indeed.
uh, a huge agenda there of tools, mechanisms, and instruments to optimize the way the Moscow River is developed and to avoid the mistakes that have been made in other cities, which you articulated very clearly. Let's now, if we may, go to our special guest, the Deputy Mayor of Budapest. Deputy Mayor, welcome. We'd like to know a little bit about what Budapest is doing to redevelop the Danube. Thank you for the thought. I tried to be short. I could speak for hours about the connection between Budapest and Danube, but I tried to be. Okay, so the function and appearance of the Danube and the Danube banks have undergone a continuous change during the last century, of course, as, as the city has been developing and its role has been expanding. But yeah, it works. As a result of waterway transport established between the FAD and producing area of the Hungarian Grey Plain, and the cities of Pest Buda have growing importance, the Danube banks were functioning as a major commercial areas since the Middle Ages until the Reform era. Yes, the, spe the spectacular development of the Danube banks in the inner city commenced following the Austro-Hungarian Compromise and the unification of the capital city and that's how the current view of the Danube Bank, which is the part of the world heritage, has been created. Its major elements, elements include, include the multi-level wharves and the representative public buildings. With the spreading of intensive industrialization and railway transport from the end of the 19th century, factories, power plants, and railway stations started to settle along the river Danube and the inner city, and these extensive enclosed areas cut the city from the river. With regard to the examples seen in Europe in the last century, for example, Lyon, Copenhagen, Barcelona, and so on, and the demands of the 21st century, the objective of urban development in our days is to restore the direct connection between the city and its inhabitants and River Danube and to develop the recreational services on the Danube banks in the interest of making as much as use of the recreational opportunities offered by the Danube as possible and making the inner city a more livable area. About the special structure of the Danube in Budapest, which is developing based on ring roads and avenues, the city can be divided in five major zones based on their typical function, density, and character. There's an inner city zone, the historical city center. There's a transitional zone, a mixed territory with residential buildings with some industrial, economic, and city management areas. The suburban zone, mixed territory with less intensive residential and economic areas and larger undeveloped areas. And there's a mountain zone and Danube bank zone. The diverse characters of the three zones, there are some views. The first one, the view from Galliard Hill, the inter inner city. The second one is the free port in Chapel, one of the islands in Budapest. The third one is the so-called Romoy Beach, which is situated in the suburban zones. An example worth following, the largest Danube side development in Budapest of the last two centuries. After the change of the political system, the territories of the Danube side station yard in Ferencváros and in Lágyványos were intended to be used as the premises of the World Explo planned to be organized in 1995. The World Expo was concerned, but a new part of the city started to emerge in its place from the early 2000s with prime category residential buildings, office blocks, and cultural center, for example, National Theater, and so on. The Buddha side of the river, a new university, campus of faculties of technology and sciences, and in the spirit of R&D and IT, and telecommunication office park were developed, thus creating the Hungarian Silicon Valley. I think that's the most important slide. Although the rep rapid and grandiose development slowed down, and in many cases got stuck, as a result of the economic crisis, we got an opportunity to reconsider the development of the territories along the Danube. The goal set by the urban development concept adopted in the spring of 2013 for the period until 2030 is a realistic urban development which makes an efficient and economical use of the land available. 
The development study plan for the Danube site territories, which determines development and action areas based on the mapping of features and opportunities, provides for the synchronized implementation of the developments by networking, and specifies the possible forms, places, and extents of utilizing the banks. The development of the Danube banks is targeted at two major areas. First of all, the creating the network, the expanding of function space on the Danube as a development axis, main street, connecting the related thematic functions, sport, culture, spa, parks, and so on. And the other one is encouraging sustainable land use, which means the territories on the Danube are the most frequented and most valuable areas of the capital city from the point of view of the real property market, where sustainability requires modes of land use which are appropriate for the value of the territories. The two slides show the development trends and the groups of projects related to the two target areas mentioned above, illustrated by a schematic map of the project. We have many projects according to the current status. And the following two slides present three more important projects we, like, we intend to do in the forthcoming years. We have some projects completed. The first one is the so-called Castle Bazaar. In the first picture, it was renovated by the government to fulfill a cultural and touristic function after having been abandoned and left to decay for decades as the first step of renewing Buddha Castle, including adjacent public spaces on the riverside. The second one, the so-called Rudash Bath, a new wellness unit with a unique view, just an example from bath development projects. And the third one is so-called Barna set, renewal of Brownfield site, a so-called cultural plaza, architectural mark. We have some projects under development. The first is the Civic Center, the center for the water sports and world championship of 2017 and 2021, developed stylishly on the riverside. The second one is the Obuda Gas Factory, R&D and cultural development of the Brownfield site. And the third one is the continuing the track of tramway number one, a swift tramway line along the most important ring road of the city, a transport development project planned for decades and of significant regional development impact. And we have many planned projects, just three of them. The so-called the first is suburban swift ship the Danube as a natural waterway is underutilized. The goal is to make it part of the regional, the regional commuter transport network. The second one is renewing inner city wharves, traffic attenuation, the peaceful coexistence of various functions, expanding recreational areas, creating direct water city inhabitants connections. And the last one, the floating facilities an alternative opportunity for expanding the limited community area available in the inner city by developing floating public spaces as a part of the renewal of wars. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor, I'm so sorry we didn't have one hour to listen to you. As you said, you could speak for a long time, but this story is very important because what you said right at the beginning is you did a review and you gave up the grandiose ideas and you decided instead to focus on projects would, which would be realistic in Budapest and then you have made great progress since then in taking things forward. You talked especially about the synchronization of lots of different projects. Seems to me there's a very big lesson in, in this that is important for all of us. Now, um, thank you very much. We will of course come to Karima later in the session. First, I want to just take a few more votes in the room. So please be ready to exercise some democracy. Uh, how many people are feeling optimistic about the Moscow River project now? Optimistic? How many people are feeling pessimistic? Okay, a few. Few are pessimistic. One, two, three. They're mainly in that corner. Not sure why. It, it, maybe you can't hear very well what's being said. Uh, <laughs> How do you think it should be financed? Is it public sector, private sector, or both? Who should finance Moscow River Project? Public sector? Private sector? 
Both? Okay, that's good. Um, how many people think we need more river crossings on the Moscow River? Do we need more river crossings? Yes? No? Okay, how many people want to go fishing in the Moscow River? Yes? Yes? No? No? A lot of vegetarians are here. This is the main problem. We don't want to go fishing. Let me ask a couple of questions to Edouard and Sergei, if I may, and then a couple of questions to Miguel and Paul and the Deputy Mayor. Um, the question about where to start and what is a good start and how you make something at the beginning that has momentum and builds and builds, what are we thinking is going to be needed there? Sergei, a comment from you and then Edouard as well. What's a good start here? Well, I speak Russian again, yes. I think that uh, a right and decent implementation of those projects which are underway is a good start. Uh, I need to say that the things we are discussing, such as a project of the Moscow River, in fact, as a renovation of territories, has been launched some time ago, because a lot of uh, projects uh, deal with river and are adjacent to it, and uh, they are implemented. Uh, for example, uh, we uh, want to cut six lanes up to four and to expand pedestrian zones. And we will uh, want to create big uh, public uh, embankments uh, along the Kremlin uh, to connect it to the Gorky Park with the transition, uh, with the pedestrian crossing, <laughs> uh, zeal embankment. Uh, it's also uh, it also implies a big pedestrian zone, and uh, these things are designed and they are under construction. So my idea is quite simple: if we start these projects correctly and implement them in the uh, nearest future, and it's the time period of three five years, it would be a good start of revitalization of the whole territory of the Moscow River started. This is what you're saying. And now it's time to make it work together. Edouard, what's your view? What's a good start? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was about to say the same, the same thing, actually. Uh, it's, uh, you can see already that Moscow is doing a lot of things. And I mean, as, as a foreigner, I feel I have no lessons to give at all to, uh, to the, the city of Moscow. Things are going on. And I think this is just a stepping stone uh, to give perhaps a a vision, a strategic vision, a, a sort of coherence between the different projects, but it's already happening. Hmm. Great. Karima, you'd like to make a comment here? Yes, thank you. Well, you know, I have a question for the audience. How many of you have flown uh, the Moskva River all along from north to south? That's a key element. You have seen very few hands. Many Moscovites do, do not know what Mo the Moscow River is about, even today. It's such a, a legacy. It's such a value. When we started to work on this project, I walked along the uh, river in all its parts uh, many times, and I, op I rediscovered this uh, river. And that's why I think the project is a, is is implementable. Uh, we can influence how Moscovites perceive their river, and this is a key element in this strategy. Uh, it can be cheap events in terms of budget. We need financing from the city, but this uh, uh, they can revitalize the river and uh, bring the population back to the river, and this is what we are quite aware of. But we should not forget that this potential, this energy, should not be wasted. We need long-term plans to integrate the urban tissue to the river. We can create a certain demand, certain um, desire for the river. But this, it should be implemented in further upcoming projects. And that's a big art. So we are aware of this. If you don't mind, how many people in the room would like the opportunity to see the whole river from the north to the south? Okay. How many of you are willing to pay to do that? 
Okay, so it looks anyway, like I'll, we have a business opportunity here. One thing, we I'll take you on a little trip during my slides too, so at least you'll get a little bit of a flavor because one of my objectives right now is to make sure that more and more people actually know what the river is like. Absolutely. But I, what I think we're saying is, as well as the virtual tour, we could organize a boat and one day these people will buy a ticket to come. Let me ask the Deputy Mayor and Paul and Miguel to comment on a different question. We had a vote, how should this be paid for? Major the majority of people think public and private. Are there any particular tools you think will help to do that? Or in the case of Budapest, how have you been paying for Danube redevelopment, Deputy Mayor? Thanks for the question. I think the most important thing is not the sources, not the resources. The most important thing that a city leadership should have a concrete vision, first step. Second step, a city leadership should have concrete plans, study developments, long-term versions, and short and mid-term versions. And the third step, fourth step, is to collect the different different type of resources. In the case of Hungary, uh, more than 90, 95 percent of the different projects it has uh, European Union money uh, allocation resources, and the other type of uh, source is their own source, of course. The third one is governmental, the fourth one for different commercial loans and so on. And the fifth one, the so-called uh, common thinking between the civil sector. So we could unify some territories among the Danube, Danube banks, which could point it to the target of a public uh, investor. So uh, these uh, territories should be attractive for the public investors, and the city leadership should be very fast, should be very tough, of course, but uh, they should be very flexible and uh, to be able to be a partner of the potential uh, rollers of the civil sector. Thank you very much indeed, Deputy Mayor. Paul, you have a view, one financial tool that will work between public and private? Well, we, we must differentiate uh, two things, this, uh, the, the public space and the development sites. The, the, I think, the, 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 of course, the public uh, space can get uh, cross-financing from different levels of government and also, uh, the, of course, the, the, the municipality, but also uh, probably um, money from uh, NGOs, why not? Uh, but when you call, talk about the development sites, what's important is to get mixed-use development and uh, in a good network of public space. And we have a system in, in France, it's not the, the, the most perfect, but it's interesting because we mutualize all these costs and benefit at the site, site uh, uh, area, and which allows us to get the uh, parks, for instance, but social infrastructure, uh, infrastructure and public housing financed by uh, the more profitable developments, such as uh, high, high key uh, uh, residential development, retail, or business. So all this fits in in the same budget, and it, it gives quite interesting results. Thank you, Paul. Miguel, your view: What's one of one or two promising mechanisms to get public and private to pay? It's not. Now, yes. Principal size that I think, of course, the finance should be public and private, but I think the balance between the two will vary along the project. In the beginning, mostly it will be, uh, will be public to give the momentum to create the public areas and so on. But as the redevelopment uh, progresses, I think there will be opportunity to capture value. Uh, and uh, then I think the private sector can collaborate much more. For example, just an instrument that has been used in Sao Paulo is the urban operations, uh, where we sell construction rights, and we have uh, um, got with this instrument like $3 billion uh, to be able to apply infrastructure, public spaces, social housing, affordable housing. Uh, when we have the development plan ongoing. So I think the phases will vary, but uh, there are many opportunities of financing, I think, the project. Thank you very much indeed. Now, who's got the microphone over there? Because I want to give the microphone for a minute to Alexander Vyakirev, who represents the, uh, the jury, the jury that selected the winning bid of Edouard. Where's the microphone, please, ladies? Who's got it? Yep. Can you bring? So where is Alexander? 
Yes, there. If you can give him the microphone. So, Alexander, welcome. You are one of the jury panel that selected the winning team of Meganon that Edouard was in. I'm going to ask you three quick questions. What does the jury think that this winner can contribute to the transport challenges of Moscow? Thank you, Greg. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a deputy of Roman Trotsenko, deputy, deputy uh, president of the uh, Ion company. We are happy with the results of the happy with the choice which was made. Why? Because we are one of the most, the biggest user of the Moscow River and adjacent territories, and. Uh, it's very important for us to develop harmoniously the Moscow, the Moskva River, and uh, that's what we have been doing at uh, certain at certain places. What we liked especially, we like that the concept is uh, very harmonious, a very balanced one. Uh, there are no uh, uh, violations. Uh, there is. Uh, very gradual trans transformation of industrial territories in, into um, uh, combined use areas by citizens and by transport. This can be cargo transport and, of course, uh, uh, public transport. Then ask you a second question. Do you think this winning scheme can contribute anything to tourism on the river? Da, конечно. Yes, of course. I've touched upon uh, this aspect during my first question. As an owner of the south, southern port, we offer a new vision to the city. It's a territory which we invest in, you, which, in which, into which we like to put in a new sense of, uh, a new uh, idea of port. And we see that the port can perform passenger functions as well as uh, river transport, which flows between uh, Kievsky Bridge and Novospasky Bridge. It can move between to the south port and, uh, uh, of course, the Zil area. The territories are changing, and the perception of the Moscow River is changing. And, of course, the guests and the Moscow and Moscovites would like to see a different Moscow in a different way, and new civil ports will enable us to in extend those routes. Thank you. Positively to the economy and the real estate development in the city. Thank you. As for this particular question, the market in Moscow has been developing independently and very well. Any international team, any participation is welcome, and we will be happy to work together with the distinguished architects and the winners and other architects. That's what we do in our projects, and we think that any experience brought to our country, helpful experience, in, for is, hel is very uh, crucial for Moscow and for Russia and the development of market will be positive. Uh, so that's why I would like to thank you. A minute, I'm going to give you 30 seconds each to say one thing you think should be achieved in the first year of the project. So please be ready for that. Before we do that, I want to just ask again a couple of questions around the table. Sergei, Edouard, maybe you, Karima, as well. How do we make sure that the river development doesn't just displace or substitute for development in the rest of the city? How do we make it work with the city? Sergei? Well, the typical feature of the city is that the Moskva River and the adjacent territory What I shared in my part is a big share of uh, the city territory, the city area. 
these areas uh, should not let us forget about the rest of the city because the river is a uh, link between different boroughs. It should be integrated, uh, which is not enough uh, to the case today. It should be more actively integrated into cargo flows, cargo transportation, and of course, the development of the territories. Uh, creating a polycentric uh, pattern of uh, city develop of urban development, and we talked about this too, how to create new senses at the periphery of the city, and why the concept uh, uh, in included the development not only of the center, uh, city center, but the periphery, and that's that's very important for this project, and we have other projects as well. Uh, Rublova Arhangelsko at the northwest and Skolkovo, Komunarka, which uh, are not on the river, but they play into the same, the same game with this project. Uh, I think we've made a very important step in uh, defining the master plan of the Moscow city in a certain aspect, uh, and we think that other parts are also uh, important, and we are mindful of them. A view on this. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I think you, you 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 mentioned I think through your question there are several several kind of um, uh, uh, dynamics in, in in place. I mean, uh, gentrification is one 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 important aspect that all urban designers or planners are aware of, and I think it's there's a way of mitigating this effect. Is it good or bad gentrification? That's the uh, million dollar question. It's very difficult because sometimes it's unavoidable, but you can mitigate the effects. You can make sure that. Uh, you don't design or put all the investment into an enclave, but it's uh, very much part of uh, the city, as Sergei was saying. And I think in our port concept, we uh, put a lot of efforts on, on showing how it connects to the city and not just an enclave of investment, which we don't want uh, this to be only summarized by this, this aspect. And also, uh, uh, in our proposal, we developed um, a lot on the regulations and how, how you can put uh, the public interest uh, in the top of your priority, and not, I think it was said by Paul, is uh, not to rush for for for, for short-term private, uh, um, uh, quick quick money, but uh, but you put the pl public interest high, and there's a way of doing this. I think uh, there's there's uh, several uh, successful case studies around the world that could be um, uh, investigated further to understand the, what's the right model for Moscow. Thank you, Karima. You want to comment there? Наверное, я понимаю. Well, I think that one of the questions which is being asked, if you are present at the Urban Forum, if you are at this session for the um, area development of Moscow, you've heard how much is going on simultaneously. The subway is being built, the new territories of Moscow, and one question, uh, well, we had several skeptics, uh, two or three hands, which were raised. How could we implement that? Uh, so much is going on at the same time, but there there are a few key elements. We cannot go after all the aspects at a time. We cannot uh, take two, 10,000 hectares and try to redevelop them. It's not possible, not realistic, and we are well aware of that. But we think that there are um, primary, uh, uh, primary measures which we have to take, and we have to link them to long-term uh, measures. But we are also developing, uh, de developing the master plan of Moscow, which balances many projects which we have for the city. Uh, we can't talk about everything, but uh, during the forum, during the urban forum, but uh, there is some innovation to our thinking. We're not only depicting the final picture of how we should view our city, but we break it down into stages how this should be implemented. And one other element which I would like to stress uh, about this competition, about this tender, why did I like the Meganom project? They viewed uh, uh, the whole blue uh, pattern, not only Moscow River. How many rivers do you know in Moscow? S small brooks. How, where did you walk uh, along them? They are very, very numerous. If we talk about the new Moscow, the uh, the blue pattern is quite interesting. All the development revolved around it. People settled there. Uh, there was there were places which were liked by everyone, and uh, this blue pattern can give us an idea 
a new idea for the new projects. Maybe we will not uh, rush to develop all the ideas next to Moscow River, but we could use them in different parts of the cities, different projects which are key to us. Thank you very much, Karina. Come now to Paul and um. only, please. Miguel said we would recommend the creation of Moscow River Development Agency. Um, maybe that's a good idea, maybe it isn't, but what is important in organizing an effort like this? Do you need single body? Do you need a strong leader? Do you need a board? What is important? Deputy Mayor, in your opinion? Well, a very strong leadership is needed in any kind of situation. So, so uh, as I think, if you are talking about a, uh, creating uh, city development plans, if uh, we are developing, developing urban areas, it's very simply that a strategical complex approach is needed. So developing something, developing a, a, a Danube Bank River or any kind of uh, river needs to have this kind of approach. It's a bit like uh, an engineering work, planning something. And uh, in every single case, every single situation, we should think very, very long term. So that's the main, main base of the starting point. And uh, every single uh, pillar is defining from that point. So strong leadership which thinks long term. Paul, what do you think is needed in the organization? I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, I think one, th one important thing is the river is there to connect the different districts of the city and the city to the region. And so we need to have that in mind also as a way of working. I mean, the, um, it's maybe not one board, maybe it is, but at least if it is, this board needs to be connected to all the other uh, areas of the city and all the other interests in the city. And I think it's really important to get different interests together uh, around tables to discuss this future because, as uh, you've just said, it's very systemic. I mean, flooding, uh, transport, uh, uh, urban development, parks, etc., have got all to do with each other. So this is really important to get things connected. So you need an integrated approach. Miguel, what do you think is important? Well, uh, maybe a clear and shared vision. I think build a consensus about what we want to obtain in the long run, I think, is important. Priority phases and resources. That's why I think in the discussion of the board, we suggest the creation of uh, an adjacent uh, agency that could be focused on these many steps. Okay, thank you. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask Karima to give the final presentation. Before we do that, I want three members of the jury to take 30 seconds each to tell us what they think can be achieved in the first year. And uh, Sabina, would you like to start? Yeah, get the microphone if we can. Where's the microphone, please? There. So if you take it, Sabina, then pass it to another member of the jury after you. What do you think can be achieved in the first year? You see me as the jury for today's uh, meeting because I'm not in the jury of the competition. Oh, I but see. Thank you. Okay, well, you've I'm got the microphone the anyway. Yes, I'm from the and city you've got 30 council seconds. of Amsterdam, yeah. and I have a flashback to 93 where uh, when Rem Koolhaas was presenting his big waterfront uh, plan for the I, the waterfront in Amsterdam, and it failed, it failed absolutely. Mm. And I have heard many uh, points already on the table mm. how such a plan can fail. And the last 20 years we have been ex ex we have worked on the waterfront mm. with exactly the list that Paul was mentioning about uh, how can you uh, face stages, how you can you use your, reuse your heritage on sta places, how can you make people uh, use the, the banks and make a new center, uh, replace actually your center from one place to the other. Um, it has been um, an extremely tense period of time in Amsterdam, but we're very proud that we have achieved the last period of time. And one advice I can give you for Moscow, and it has been slightly on the table, but I haven't heard the word yet, that's making use of the power of the people that are there to 
make create value to these uh, banks. Uh, in Amsterdam, we own the land, and so we are the biggest investor in the city. We don't sell it out immediately, so we have um, a need to create value first before we can uh, develop. And we are very experienced now, uh, although we are a very small city, to use this power of the people with little initiatives and then later on make the final plan. So from paper to realization, that's my big worry for this plan still. Thank you. That's not quite what to achieve in the first year, but it's an intelligent worry. Who else is in this jury? Who wants to make a quick comment? Anyone? No hands? Okay, that's it. Thank you. Let's go to um, the final speech, if we may. I'd like to invite Dr. Karima Nigmatulina. I pronounced the name a bit better the second time, Karima. You're the director of the Gen Plan Institute here in Moscow. And uh, please, will you give us the final address? Thank you. Yes, If I may, perhaps. What I would like to start with, I'm starting with the same slide Sergei has had at the beginning because I'd like to emphasize one figure. 83 kilometers of the Moscow River, it's the length and the scale of the project uh, we are uh, we are trying to implement. It's a huge project. If we look at the uh, equivalent project in Paris and other cities, they account for 10, 12 kilometers, 20, 30 kilometers, but 83 is a great length for a river. And it's a uniqueness of the project as well, because uh, those measures which are needed for the implementation are various and multifaceted. We can't use uh, one uh, standard scheme for all the things. And what I'd like to show is the variety of Moscow River, uh, all the facets. I'd like to bring you to a short excursion, as I have said before, and it's an excursion I'm able to do in such conditions. This is the places you haven't seen, perhaps. If we start from the north, we will go, not float, but go to the south. So we start from the territory which is close to the Moscow Rain Road. Uh, the only construction work which is implemented at the moment there is a Spartak Stadium, which has been launched, and we have empty vacant territories. Uh, we have Stroganski territories, residential areas uh, with lots of greeneries. It's uh, one type of the river. We see a lot of curves of the river, we see a lot of greenery, and we see a lot of residential areas. If we move a bit further, we'll see some of our green territories without uh, residential areas, that's the recreational potential of the city, which is a unique one. In fact, we see some uh, complexities how to integrate uh, these green territories in um, the city. I don't mean uh, site development. I mean uh, the population, people who could spend their time there. Uh, such uh, green massives bring us to the territory of the Moscow city. And before we see uh, the Moscow city, we'll uh, see a very interesting story. On the one hand, we see uh, vacant uh, green territories. And on the other bank, we will see uh, an old port. And it's about one kilometer from the Moscow city. So uh, there is uh, quite disintegration. So uh, these are the territories uh, to be the first one to be enhanced. So. Uh, we see lots of projects implemented within uh, the run of the 15, 20 years. We see the great Moscow city, but we see uh, this uh, out-of-date port closed to it. So we uh, are supported by the projects which were implemented by our predecessors. But we need to understand that we need to proceed. So we uh, have two caucus structures, Moscow Rain Railway, Railway Road and Moscow River, and both are the backbones, uh, because the first one uh, is a natural backbone, and Moscow Railway Rain Road is a caucus established 100 years ago, and uh, now it's again integrated in the city infrastructure, and these territories are uh, the priorities in their own way, and so we have large-scale projects regarding them. Uh, we move further. 
uh, we see a very important, crucial object on the Moscow River, uh, our granite embankment, Slujniki. It's the territory which is integrated in the city Tanoa. It's the sports constituent, sports core of the city, which is uh, integrated, uh, reintegrated in the 21st century, and it's needed not only to have some sport facility, but also to conduct the World Championship in 2016, 17, 18. So we have definite goals, and that's why that's a priority, because we know why we need that. We move further. So these are the projects which have been implemented already. Uh, we emphasize, it emphasizes that Moscow feels Moscow River as a crucial <laughs> element. We see the Gorky Park, uh, which is implemented, and people spend a lot of time there. And this year, this summer, uh, we have reorganized embankments opposite to the Gorky Park. We move further. Uh, this picture is an interesting one. It's the face of our capital. If uh, you look at the pictures associated with uh, Moscow, this is Kremlin. And we see the Kremlin embankment, we see the Kremlin, and we see such roads. And of course, one of the questions we ask, how can we alleviate, soften the city? Because Greenwich uh, embankments are very tough. And we have a very interesting proposal from the Meganom company that it can be done. We move further. Other interesting territories, our um, former industrial zones, the former territories of Zeal, and the project is also uh, underway, and it's the crossing of the Moscow Rail uh, Road, uh, Railway Ring Road and the Moscow River. That's why these projects, Zeal and Moscow City, are uh, symmetric ones, and they must be a priority because we have our Ring Road here and we have Moscow River. And that's why uh, we must think about it first. I think a very crucial element in reorganization of these territories uh, is the fact that we lack greenery here, and we need to re regenerate this green and blue carcass in the project. And a very interesting territory, the southern port. On the one hand, it's the most crucial cargo uh, terminal uh, because it uh, has more than 50% of uh, cargo turnover in the Moscow uh, river region but uh, i have a question does our is our port to uh, be like this in the 21st century is it good to have a port uh, a cargo port in a city we discussed this issue in different universities and we um, decided that yes we need it but it uh, must look like a decent port of the 21st century it must be a cutting edge port and so the last part of the moscow river our residential zones So these residential areas can be enhanced due to the priority measures mentioned by Paul, because look at the accumulation of people near the Moscow River. But what can be done on the uh, vacant embankment uh, where there is only greenery? Yes, you can walk a dog there, but what can you do else? How can you spend your weekend there? So we need to implement different uh, events projects which will use the existing infrastructure to enhance it because we can revive these regions in their own way. And so I think Edouard uh, has mentioned it before. Moscow River is a multifaceted uh, river and of course projects, the project implemented must preserve uh, the variety. Uh, preserve all the stages, all the phases. And I think the word mentioned on one of the previous sessions was sustainability. Sustainability of our idea uh, in terms of time and in terms of finance and in terms of this vision. Because in the run of the time, economic cycles in all the countries all over the world change each other. And perhaps it doesn't take 
20 years. When we talk about 80 kilometers and enhancement, such a large scale enhancement and redevelopment, it can take more than 20 years. And how can we uh, construct such a system which will be sustainable in all the economic cycles? I think these are very important issues we need to address. And we must preserve the vision of the project. Because on the one hand, it's complicated to remember all these aspects, all these new things. But if we don't have this vision, we won't have this overall picture. And the goal we set today is to preserve it from the economic point of view in time, but also not to lose our vision. And I'd like to end my presentation with some positive image pictures, which can uh, give an alternative uh, way of life for Moscow River. Because uh, during one session, it was mentioned that we need to dream about this vision. If we don't have this vision, if we don't have this dream, it's difficult to deal with such a project. And if we dream a bit, then uh, Moscow River uh, can transform in different views. And I think that many projects were very interesting, and all of them, they have uh, their specific traits. And I think in the run of the three, four months, we will be scrutinizing all the materials proposed because they're all very beautiful and they give us a space to dream. And I think there is some um, token in that uh, that Edward and me are uh, finalizing with the same uh, slide. Uh, perhaps uh, we see a forgotten part of um, uh, the city, but we can do some simple things and to return this territory to people. And such a vision of bringing the fir tree and the skating ring is quite a great one. And I'd like to leave this dream to you. Indeed, you've described the extraordinary scale and diversity of the Moscow River. You've talked about the impact of the river on the whole city. You spoke about the imperative to maintain a strong vision for the future. And you spoke about the time frame needing to be long in order to do everything but to start straight away. And then you ended with dreams and visions and illustrations of how it could be. Thank you very, very much. Now, colleagues, we have to wrap up, but I'm going to ask you some more questions very quickly. Firstly, did you learn something today about Moscow River you didn't know before? Did you learn something yes? Did you learn something no? Ah, you didn't bother to vote. Okay. Uh, are you looking forward to swimming in the river in the way that uh, Karima suggested? Do you want to swim in the river in July? <laughs> Not in December, in July. And last question, I'm very serious here. Will you please support the Moscow River Redevelopment Project? Will you support it actively? Let me see. Good. If you're not going to support it, OK, 100%. We've done very well. Now, next year, we must have one day for this discussion, and we must have a bigger room. I'm sorry to everyone who had to stand up, but it's been wonderful to have you here. I only want to say good luck, and uh, uh, we hope the Moscow River goes well. Sergei, are you, try are you going to say something? You're about to press? No. So let me then, in that case, invite you to thank our special guest, the Deputy Mayor of Budapest. Please thank him. And then we're going to thank Karima, Sergei, Edouard, Miguel, Paul, and uh, our, our stand-in speaker, and of course, Sabine. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.